Hi, I'm Kira, and this is going to be part two of our how to spin yarn. We're not spinning a yarn, but we are going to spin yarn. We want to show you specifically how to ply, because technically you don't have a yarn until you've got two pieces or more put together. So what we'll show you today is how to take two and make them into one. Okay, this is going to be part two to how to spin yarn. Um, if you haven't watched the first one, make sure you do. But we realized um, before you only have one ply, and technically if you're going to have a yarn, you need to have at least two pieces bound together or more. But we're going to show you a two-ply yarn today. So first what you need to do is take your tension off and replace your bobbin. You have to have an empty bobbin, and you can have your yarn. I have two spools here. I've got one that's completely full. This is all Shetland fiber from my sheep that I've done. And I've got a built-in Lazy Kate on my wheel. Lazy Kate is what holds your bobbins and allows them to spin freely so that when you're plying, um, you don't have to worry about constantly yanking to get your yarn off. Um, most, most wheels don't have one and you have to have one separate on the ground. Um, I've watched a friend put one bobbin in a basket on one side and another bobbin in the basket on the other side and it worked, um, but this is definitely more convenient. So I'm going to grab an empty bobbin and I'm going to place this one down here also. So I've got them both ready and now I'm going to put my empty bobbin up top. You can watch that. You can see I have a leader thread on there already. I try to always leave one on if I can make life easier on myself. I'm going to replace this piece here and put this back on. Now I'm going to put this back on the drive band and then I'm going to run my leader thread up through the hooks and I'm going to use an orifice hook to run through this orifice and pull my leader thread back down through. Okay, now to make sure that all of this is good and I've got a good tension on there. What I will probably have to do is adjust the tension because while you spin with one tension, you will probably have to adjust your tension in order to ply because they're going to be different. This knob on mine is what adjusts the tension. It makes this whole piece go up or down. Um, but usually what I do is I get going and kind of feel it out and I'll give you tips on that as we go. So first I'm going to take the yarn from each of my other bobbins and I am just going to tie them on to this one. Just simple easy knot. Nothing special. And we're going to go, we're going to ply in the opposite direction that we spun. So if you were spinning before and the wheel was turning to the right, then this time you have to make sure that your wheel is going to be turning to the left and vice versa. Um, sometimes you just gotta get it going. I'm gonna look and see which way my thread is gonna wanna wind onto the bobbin. You can kinda get it going. Sometimes it'll slip around that middle. And there are special knots you can do to make sure they don't slip, but that's for another lesson. Now let's see if we can get this going through. Yep, we do. It's starting to wrap around. Now sometimes this will happen where it might want to stick a little bit in the orifice. All I do is kind of pull it through gently and then I will turn the bobbin by hand and just guide it through so it doesn't get stuck on the hooks till we get down to what's already plied. Just keep an eye on it because once it gets stuck on those hooks sometimes it's a snag in your whole project. There we go. Now we've got it to where we can just focus on plying. So I'm going to put my feet down on the treadles and I'm just going to start spinning and I'm going to let you watch. What I'm doing is I'm kind of keeping a finger in between these two and I'm letting it slide in. Now see I can tell that I've got way too much tension because it's wanting to kind of like corkscrew up um, and when you're doing this you don't want to be able to put it down here and have it twist like that. What you want is something that's just going to lay limp so that you don't have twist in a finished project. 
So now I have the fun of seeing if I can loosen it and get less twist. No, I need more, because that's right. And I get confused on that sometimes. You want it to be tighter so that it will pull it in faster instead of putting so much twist into it before it goes onto your bobbin. So here we go. Now it's pulling in faster instead of putting so much twist. It's still um, not as much as I'd like, so I'll add a little more. Now that's about what I want. And I'm just keeping that finger in between the two. And I pull out and I let it twist up into my fingers. And then I'm going to let it just slide on. Just like that. And I pull it out and then let it slide in. Now I'm going to check my tension, and you can see it's just kind of laying there limp. That's exactly what you want. You don't want it to be twisting. Um, you don't want it to be too loose either. Like back towards my hand, I can see it's not twisted up as much as I would like. There's like a space in here. So I might try to get just a little more twist, but it's already twisted up great here. So by the time it goes on, I think it'll be fantastic. Remember with your hooks here to not just keep plying so that it all bundles up in one spot. When you start to see it getting full, just move it down to another hook and back and forth. So we'll just keep going. And you can see it's just going along. And you'll get to know it by feel. And you can play around with it. And I'll just periodically check it. I'm gonna check it more now than I normally would. But see, it's just hanging nice and limp. It's got a good twist on it. It's exactly what it ought to look like. And then when you're all done going through both of your bobbins, then you're able to just break off a couple pieces or cut. In this case, they might be strong enough that I have to cut. So we're just going to cut them. And you can finish feeding it through the orifice. No problem. Then when you're done, um, if you have what's called a nitty knotty, you can use that. Um, maybe we could think about a YouTube on that one later too. But for now, I'll just show you how to make a ball. Once you pull it off, you just take the whole bobbin off again. Not the whole assembly. That wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> but I'll put that back together. And I'll leave my empty bobbin on there for my next project. Let's see here, there we go. Now, I will show you how to turn it into a ball. This is what they did back in the old days. It was quick and easy. You wrap it around your fingers a couple times, and then wrap around that, and then you go back the other way and just keep it tight, pinched. Go around, and you just go until you're done with the whole thing. And the idea is when you're all done, you've already got a ball of yarn to work with for crocheting or knitting or whatever you, else you feel like. And we'll just break it off our leader line there. And voila, your ball of yarn.